Good. Good. Well, uh, we got a uh, question from our friend Rich. And I figured we'd talk about uh, an article you wrote a while back. And we'll see how we Yeah, I kind of forgot it. about that one. I said something smart once. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, how, how do you feel that the marathon training affects your jujitsu? Well, honestly, I'm not training jujitsu because of the social distancing thing. So it's not affecting it at all. Ultimately, I like this has been pretty encouraging. So, uh, we signed up for this thing with less than a month to get ready for it. And that's not very long, especially if, if I want to do like a good <laughs> half marathon. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm running it with my wife, which is different than running it. Um, like stand up and both doing it. We're running it together. So we're really limited. I always say like when you run, something will hold you back from going a little faster, whether it's your lungs or maybe it's a pain in your calf or your leg, like you'll hit some kind of a limit and it'll, it'll slow you down a little bit. So oftentimes that's each other. <laughs> like, we're running together. Uh, so I don't. So, so she's tired of waiting for you all the time. Huh? Well, I, I, I don't like to walk during a run and she'll walk a couple of times, but honestly like she can walk a little bit and then catch me and she would rather do that than to not get to walk so she'll run a little faster after the walk i if if i walk with her i recover nothing like i don't feel better after it i kind of tighten up when i'm running i kind of like get into a mode i don't think about it i'm just just going we, we ran nine miles yesterday uh and it was pretty well we the the run before that that was a little bit longer was a six mile run and that was pretty hard so, but and that was a week ago, nine miles yesterday went well. And so, uh, you know, I don't feel sore or anything today. So, and, and this is all off of a base of running my dog maybe once or twice a week, two miles, you know, that's kind of before the month started. Uh, that's what I was at, you know, jogging a little bit. And, and I say running, jogging, we're jogging here, right. not running. When you, when your wife walks, does she, have like a schedule or a pace like she likes to run 10 minutes walk for a minute or does she no, just, walk it's just like she... she just wants to just kick in and walk for a few seconds and she walks fast so she's not losing a ton uh but it's she's able to recover a little bit maybe she maybe she does some focused breathing or something like that she's told me that when i try to walk with her she's like take a couple deep breaths well i'm not really out of breath anyway you know my body's kind of getting sore my legs are getting a little bit stiff but yeah, it's just she recovers from that, and I don't sin, tend to see any benefit from that for myself. So, but we run together, and so if she, if she walks, I might walk with her, or I might uh, just jog along, and she'll catch me pretty easily. Sometimes she'll run ahead of me a little bit, and then she'll walk and let me catch up with her. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it's helping my jujitsu. So, when I did run, uh, I ran a couple of half marathons, and then I ran one full, which, uh, it, it definitely affected my jiu-jitsu when I was training. It's just the, the, the difference between the half and the full is the training schedule. Like literally, I, you know, you, I would go run 17, 18 miles while I was training for this. That's more than a half marathon. <laughs> and that's a big chunk of time. So if I want to, you know, spend, so when I ran my full marathon, I, I remember the time because I was, I was really happy with it. It was four hours and three minutes. And it, and it was a cool day and it, and it rained a little bit, which I, I like that. And so I basically ran that as fast as I could. And it, you know, I, I was happy with that. And I felt like I, I'm done with this. You know, <laughs> Miss, Miss Brady took all day. It seemed like it just took all morning or it, it, you know, to go run 17 miles to, to train, you know, once a week was a big chunk of time. Missing the four the four hour mark by three minutes that didn't make you just want to go out and run another one. No, because that's sort no. of a, a milestone. Like if you could do a yeah, sub four marathon, that's good. Yeah. Or four four hour marathon. But I didn't, good. I, didn't didn't have, I didn't have four hours as a goal. In fact, my my half marathon time uh, on my I think my better one was about was two hours. So I basically kept the pace that I had 
And I, and I was like, well, maybe four hours and 20 minutes or 4.30 would be fine. So, uh, yeah, I pushed at the end, but I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I mean, that's just what I had that day and, and the conditions were helpful. If it had been a hot day, it would have been way over four. Yeah. Like the heat is, heat bugged me more. But yeah, that was a, yeah, Rich asked that question on Facebook. And uh, I know he's a runner. He's a, he runs on, I don't know what he, he does marathons. He, he, he runs on trails a lot. He just put it, he just mentioned that the other day running on trails. So I had to get um, a different type of shoe because I, I have running shoes. I, the running shoes are my normal shoes. I just wear them all the time. But the, where I run, it's a, it's a trail that has like gravel. It's an old railroad track and the rocks are, they're just, they're just big rocks. And occasionally you step on one wrong and it just, ah, you know, it just bites into your foot. And so I had to get trail running shoes, which have a much harder sole. It allows me to, to not get so many uh, discomfort with the foot. But yeah, it's it, uh, the, the goal that we both set, me and my wife, is just to something to push us a little bit while we're not doing our normal workouts, I guess. <clears throat> and so that's and this is a, doing that. This is a virtual event. There's a bunch of you guys getting together and running a half marathon at the same time in different places or what do I you guess I, it really doesn't matter to me who else is doing it I mean <laughs> like there is no community feel to this um, yeah. I guess we get a t-shirt uh, but you know I, she's she's in it with me and that's really what, what matters uh, I, there's probably other people in Wichita doing it she's done so this the the what the whole thing that got us into this is she's done there's a thing called vacation races or something like that and we were in she did one in Arizona and it was like really pretty and, and running around in, in these canyons and stuff. And it was a half marathon and, and she was really excited about that. I didn't do that one. I just kind of cheered her on and I said, I don't vacation. <laughs> I don't want to do that to myself. But uh, she gets these emails from them all the time, you know, cause she's on their list. And they said that, you know, all the vacation races are canceled. And then that didn't affect her. She wasn't going to do it anyway. We weren't signed up. And then she get another email. Vacation races have became staycation races. Just do one from home. She's like, oh, that's kind of neat. And, and that's kind of what how that would happen. So, but uh, yeah, that was that was Rich's comment. And he says, why don't I do a full marathon? I've done one. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. How long. So the, it's not. I don't. It's it's relaxing. You know. I guess I'm running at a pace that's not miserable. And I just you know, put on some music or a podcast or audiobook and just go run. And the the time will, so when I run two miles, it's pretty strenuous and, and that's what I've been doing. It's kind of hard. I, you know, me and my dog run pretty hard sometimes, but for these longer runs, just out there, just jogging, it's, it's kind of, it's, I don't know, relaxing is the right word, but kind of get into a zone. But I don't know, I might continue to push a little bit further and further uh, you know, because I do have a void of time that I would be going to jujitsu and doing jujitsu. I mean, train an hour and a half, and then I also drive. It takes 25 minutes to get there, so that's a, that's a good chunk of time that we're freed up to do Zoom calls and <laughs> those sort of things. But yeah, I don't know if I'll ever do a distance like that again. The full just it's hard to commit that many hours a week to running, but maybe it's not when I'm not doing jujitsu. And who knows when we'll do jujitsu? We might have to wait till a vaccine comes out to do jujitsu. Who knows what it's going to look like? Yeah, I you know they started talking about this three tier uh, process for reopening the economy or whatever. And uh, in the first tier was like gyms can reopen. And man, I saw all my friends get so excited about That's that. That's not the same thing. Well, they're talking about gyms where you can go be five feet away from people and lift some weights or yeah. something. They have to almost they have to almost allow wrestling because that's what like that's what's with the that's what people know. So when they say uh, wrestling season isn't canceled or wrestling is is okay, uh, that would that would be indicator that jujitsu is going to be good. And right, and right. to figure that out ourselves is I don't know anything about viruses and anything more. Than anybody else watches the news? Well, I think <laughs> I think when they give gyms in general, I see somebody's trying to log on. When they, yeah, get, Drew here. when they give the gyms in general the green light to open up, hey, Drew. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? 
good good like uh that's that's awesome to see you guys like uh i listen to you all the time so i'm i'm just like blown away at the uh real interaction here <laughs> <laughs> we'll prepare for a little mild disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You guys never cease to disappoint. So I just want to thank you guys. You guys do. Uh, you guys have always uh, been a really big influence in my uh, even, I don't know, like mental health. Uh, because I, it, it's always really helpful to have you guys uh, to background and, and have insightful thoughts whenever I can't train. So. I thank you guys a lot. Appreciate it, man. Drew, Drew, where do you train? What, what's going on with your jujitsu when you're able to do it? So uh, I live in Charleston, South Carolina, um, and I think we have fairly uh, relaxed quarantine compared to uh, the rest of the world. So uh, I've been able to do some like one-on-one -on -one training sessions uh, with people that are, are also just like in the same situation that I'm in, which is like I live with my wife it's just us two we don't have any family members or anything like that that we interact with so it's just me and me and her so it's not a lot that we're going to be able to spread this thing too so uh, i've still been able to get in like five training sessions a week or so uh just don't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> whoops yeah yeah that, but, i mean so when you do train is it a room full of 30 people or is it you and a few people uh during this quarantine, it's just me and another person. Okay. It's just one on one. Um, at most, we'll have like three people, you know. But uh, I've tried doing Zoom classes uh, with my. I teach. I teach on the weekends, um, and I try to do some Zoom classes. But man, they are just not making any traction. Um, people are not really excited. Uh, I guess as I am to just, even if it's just like. Uh, an analytical view of jujitsu. Like uh, I did my first Zoom class and we started talking about uh, where are the biggest holes in your game, right? Like uh, I played this game with them to say like, how would you beat yourself? You know, you're going up against yourself in the bracket. Like, how would you actually beat that shadow version of yourself? And we kind of talk through a lot of everybody, everybody's games and like where there's holes in them. And then the next class, it was like one person. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, and that's an interesting question. It's that's almost better to do those sort of conversations. You're not going to be teaching how to do a inverted heel hook or any, like it's just I don't know. It's just this is a good time for self study where if you want to go research something, you, there's the information's out there. Go do that. But to, to try to continue to build the team or to staff some you know something like that come together a little bit. I think that is that's helpful and healthy. But people got to want to do it as well. So that's the thing. I like your question though. How would you how would you beat yourself? And <laughs> that's that's a good yeah. uh, thing to reflect on because it it does show you your your weaknesses that that aren't fun to work on sometimes. Like typically when somebody one of the guys at at my gym just walks through me, they, it's almost the same thing. Like it's it's they they get me to play half guard, which I don't have a good half guard. But I'm not – also, I don't think, oh, no, I'm playing half guard. So they kind of force half guard on me. They slice right through it. And then typically the, the biggest submission I get caught in is Kimura. I tap super early to Kimuras. I don't even try to escape them very often. I'll fight the setup. But once you've locked your hands, I, I'm, I'm usually good to go from there. I say, oh, good. <laughs> like, so that would be the easy way to get me uh, – trick me to play half guard and then, and then pass that because it's – I don't have a real offensive half guard, but and I also I like the question too because it's it's both sides of it. It's like how would you beat yourself too? So it's like yes, uh, you know, and also how would you win? You know, yeah. how would you beat the other version of yourself? So it also focuses on like your strength. It's like well, I would, you know, if 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 half guard's not your thing, and maybe you know full close guard or some other kind of guard is your thing. Like it's like how do you funnel people into that that uh, pathway and get started yeah. like that. Well, Drew, the, the bad thing is I love passing half guard. <laughs> it's like, all right, I have someone's playing half guard. I, that's, and that's also my weakness to play. Joe, do you have anything like that that you, uh, how would you beat yourself? On the, on the jiu-jitsu, jiu please. 
<laughs> Heavy top pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ironically, it's probably what I, I'm good at. It's what I hate the most, too, is getting stuck on bottom, man. You, you, I'll, uh, I'll start to make uh, mistakes. I mean, I don't know if you'd call them mistakes because I know I'm making them, but I'll start to do things that are not safe things to do just to get out of bottom position. I, I'd rather get submitted trying to escape, trying to get out, than just sit there and defend. And So, yeah, put enough top pressure on me, and I'll pro you'll probably get something. It's interesting that it's uh, both sides of the coin there, right? Like the thing that you love to do is also the thing that you hate. You know, it's almost like in, in your brain, you've realized that, that it's, it's so effective, you know, and that's why you do it all the time. Probably because somebody did it to you and you're like, I just, I should just start doing that, you know? Sure, and, then, yeah. and then it turns into like this, like, oh God, please don't, please don't shoot me with my own gun. You know, like that's my, that's my thing. Don't shoot me with it, please. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And that's for sure. Anytime I've been uh, beaten in, in competition, I've been very interested in the techniques that have, that have worked. You take those home and you really, you respect those techniques and you work hard on them. So Drew, uh, what's your off the mat training been like? Other than you're, you're, you're doing some training, but. It's been mostly instructionals. Um, so I've been, I'm, I'm an instructional junkie. I, that's kind of like how I, I really like to learn is that I can watch something. I can do a lot of internal visualization about how the move is supposed to be played out. And then uh, when I go to actually practice it on a live training partner, I, I already have like the steps in my mind. So I've been really lucky and that that's already how my like mindset works. I think a lot of people learn in different ways. You know, some people have to be shown physically. Some people are very trial and error. And I'm a lot more like mentally visualized what, what I want to do. So it hasn't been so bad for me. I've been doing a lot of match analysis, like of old matches from back in the day since the IBJJF's been putting on some awesome uh, old school highlights. That's been really cool. And uh, Flow Grappling's also been doing the same thing. So that's been really fun to just go down and break down people that from like 10 years ago, you know, matches that I've never seen because I wasn't really into the sport back then. And uh, ones that like, have, wow, you know, we do things so differently now. You know, you watch some of these older matches from Worlds um, back in like 2010 and they're just, they're so different. You know, just the styles are, are way different. So that's been really fun. I've really enjoyed that part of everything. It's just like the match analysis. Yeah. Our I coach, like Go ahead, Joe. Well, I was going to say, our coach challenged us a week or so ago. He's got a, a, a running calendar he keeps that we can check. So when we go to class, we know what position we'll be working on that day. And he's got that run out several months ahead. So it's still active. And he's been challenging us to watch a little bit of an instructional every day on that position, which I've been doing. But he's also challenged us to watch at least one black belt match a day. And, Drew, I'm with you. I was surprised at how many – matches from just six seven eight years ago that you could see a drastic change in grappling style over a pretty short period of time yeah it's not like that stuff doesn't work if i mean i've been it's it's amazing you get stuck in somebody's clothes guard that's really good it's like that is a nightmare it, you know or you get tricked by some some new variation of some guard you're not familiar with they're both they're both bad spots but the clothes guard guy i know everything that's coming at me and they're still Nothing you could do about it. <laughs> so I do like, so you're doing some basically one-on-one -on -one training, which I have found historically for me has been great. If you get, get a good training partner, one-on-one -on -one time is some of the best environment to learn in. And, and then you mentioned like training for videos, bringing that into one-on-one, -on -one, it's, it's really a time that you're going to be adding skills to your game maybe not it depends on your training partner too but maybe not like a ton of you know crazy roles but you definitely could add elements to your game that hadn't even been there sounds like yeah for sure and, and i'm really blessed in uh some of the training partners that i have they're very open to trying new things and they're open to learning right so they're not just trying to get their rounds in so they can just smash somebody or uh you know 
do what they're normal. They understand kind of the situation where even if we're at different skill levels, we're both trying to explore and uh, and try and try and learn. So that's been really good. So Drew, tell us a little bit about yourself. We know you're uh, South Carolina, but how long been training and and uh, we brought you to jujitsu? Uh, yeah. So I uh, I started jujitsu um, almost four years ago. Um, I started jujitsu because uh, I was watching like the UFC and then I was, they would go to the ground and I would have no idea what was going on. Uh, I was watching people hit arm bars and I'd be like, okay, that looks really difficult, right? It looks hard, but I don't know why it's so hard. You know, I know there's a lot going on there. There's subtle nuances that I just don't know. So I want to try this thing out and see how hard it is. And I, uh, I called my coach up and I was like, yeah, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this jujitsu thing. And uh, my coach is super laid back. He's very like, uh, yeah, he's, he's like, just show up. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, um, yeah, I'd like, do, do I need to like bring anything? He's like, no, just show up. And uh, so I walk in on my first day uh, and, and he's, you know, he's like, I was like, hey, you know, I talked to you on the phone. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just like get on the mat. So I got on the mat and I just got destroyed. Uh, absolutely destroyed. And I, I don't know if I had that moment yet of just like, I can do this to people. But eventually that's what came through. I was like, you know, like I feel like if I keep doing this, I can have that kind of like power to, to do this stuff. And, and I want to be able to do that. Uh, and then once I got like the bug, um, it really like became really important to me. Uh, and then I actually training for about a year and a half and then I lost my job. I used to work for the railroad and I was working all sorts of crazy hours. I didn't get to train a whole lot, but when I lost my job, I started training full time, uh, like twice a day. It was like the best thing that ever happened to me, uh, which is, which was great. Uh, so I did like 10 months of just like really intense training. Um, and that was, uh, I, I think that's when everything's really started to click for me. And then see, I got my blue belt. And then uh, I did, I, I'm not like a big competition person. I don't really like competing all that much. Mostly, I don't like competing if you talk to me the day before. Talk to me after, and then I'm like, yes, competition is the best thing that's ever happened. But uh, I did Worlds, Nogi Worlds last year, um, and that was really cool. It was an awesome experience to be out there and just like be immersed in like the jujitsu culture where like, I'm not used to just like, oh, I'm standing here in the warm-up area next to Cyborg. And, uh, oh, there's Paulo Meow. He's like right next to me. It's like, I'm, like what is happening? You know, like it was, it felt like just like a very uh, uh, surreal moment. Uh, so I did pretty well. Um, I got second, which uh, which is so aggravating and also really good at the same time. Yeah. It's like, it's just like, you get so close and then you're just like, nope. Like, and, and I came back and uh, everybody was, like, they were really proud and they were happy. And then they'd be like, oh, you know, you'll get them next time. And I'm like, yeah, that's not, it's not that simple. <laughs> like I talked <laughs> to my parents, my parents would be like, oh, you, when's the next, you know, when's the next uh, world's competition? I'm like, it's in a year and it's not that simple. Like, it's not like you just like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll just restart back in the finals match. It's like, no, to, to get there. Um, and I started, so I started teaching, I know I skipped a step there, but like I started teaching probably a year and a half ago. I really love teaching. That's been like uh, the best way I've ever had to really dive into jujitsu and understand every little subtle nuance to every single part of like the moves. And I realized like how deep the well goes, and how dumb I really am. And, uh, you know, you're just like teaching a basic move and you're like, God, I'm so stupid. Like, I don't realize how hard it is to get every little grip right. Uh, so that's when, like, teaching really, like, made me, uh, was like a catalyst for me to just spend the time to learn the subtleties. So when I, when I was watching my, uh, my, my coach teach moves, now I'm looking at everything, you know? I'm not just going, like, I know how to do, uh, like, the hip, hip bump Kimura sweep, you know, that white belt killer sweep that everybody hits when they're white belts and i'm like okay 
I know how to do this. I should be fine. I don't need to watch. And now when I started teaching, I was like, okay, I need to watch everything he's doing because if I'm going to have to show this to somebody. I don't want to miss a step. And that really got me thinking like about how complicated everything really is. It still scares me to this day. I'm still terrified of like how deep everything goes where you watch somebody like Hodger Gracie just killing everybody with a cross collar choke. And I'm like, how does that, how, how is that working? How does it work at the highest high levels? And like, I can't, I can't hit it to save my life. But this guy hits a very basic move. Like he's got to be doing something right. You know, I know I got went off on a tangent there, but I just, uh, I love jujitsu. Yeah. I love, uh, the kind of the whole package of it too, not just like the, the sport aspect of it, which I really do enjoy, or the, the, the mindset or, or just it's, it's all encompassing that's what I love about it yeah well I, I want to you know congratulations on your performance at Worlds uh, there, there are studies that have been done on Olympic athletes and the like like happiness like how happy somebody is after performance second place is the toughest one like if you get third you, you're, you're literally happier because you got a medal and you were so close to not getting a medal, you know, like, it, although second place is better than third, it's just, it's a tough spot, but that's an amazing accomplishment. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so you're, you're right there. And that's the thing is why it's so hard is because uh, parts of, you know, like you, you're that good at jujitsu and, and on any given day, just like when you roll with some, of your, your tough training partners, any given day, they catch you and maybe next day you catch them. Yeah. You know, it might've been a coin flip. And and that's kind of hard to to deal with that. But it sounds like your team's super proud of you, and uh, you know, you, I've definitely experienced as far as like teaching is a whole different thing, and there's a lot to it. But take it in stride and and enjoy the process of learning how to be a teacher and and learning how to to show things. And but you always best to show things that you really like as well. But kind of got to know a lot of stuff. <laughs> But that's, that's yeah, I always, try, I always try and stick to things that I love and that I that I find are really effective too. Like I don't I don't play lasso guard all that often, so I'm not teaching lasso guard things, right? Like, uh, so I'm just I'm a purple belt, so I try not to get in. Like I feel like once you get to like that brown black belt level, you kind of have this very full game uh, to where things are you're very comfortable in pretty much every type of position and, and you have a wealth of knowledge in each one of those things. I still feel very uh, like segmented in my lanes where I feel really, really comfortable at, and I feel really comfortable in these positions and I just try not to drift too far off That's... into the, the, the lane. <laughs> Drew, I tell you, I feel the same way, man. <laughs> Haven't even that black belt. It's like at best I have a few more ways to keep, jiu-jitsu in the places i want to keep it versus um you know just going so far deep into the area i don't know i'm just as confused as anybody you know i'm 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 good at a few things and okay at a pretty good amount and then you know a lot of a lot of if you wanted me to show you this or that and i'm not familiar with it it's not going to be a high level of understanding there's too much jujitsu, but the things that i really like i you know that's what i like and that's i think that's most people are. You really have to be a student for a long time in the game to to have a broad understanding of, of a lot of jujitsu. Yeah, there's a lot to keep up with. Uh, be, being an instructor, just keeping up that encyclopedia is a big job, I think. Yeah, and you, but and that's, and that's definitely a challenge because students are interested in certain things. You know, lapel guard, and it's like I don't, I hardly use the lapel at all. Like a lot of times, even with when we're grappling with the gi, I'll I'll collar, I'll tie up like by the back of the neck, just because I try to do the same thing every day I'm rolling, and it's it's really it's about half gi, half no gi, and I don't want to get too reliant on the on the collar, so my my gi chokes suffer from that. I used to when I was a pro belt, I loved you know lapel chokes and 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 and, and doing things like that. I have not done very many of those in the past several years so it's definitely a, a weak area but can i defend them i hope so <laughs> definitely alarm bells go off when people start uh, grabbing my lapel in certain ways and 
but it is kind of fun to get into the woods and let somebody wrap that around your leg and then get the like okay let's see where this goes i don't know uh, you know i need that's definitely an area i need to work on but it's different to defend things versus trying to pull them off yeah there's a there's a few guys at my gym who play a lot of lapel guard and i i'm mostly no gi i probably am 80 percent no gi and 10 percent or 20 percent gi uh and when I feel these things going and happening, I'm just like, I feel the, the, my lapel get wrapped around my leg and I'm just like, well, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never, it's, it's almost fun. It, that's yeah. where it's like, it is more fun to deal with that and be like, wow, I wonder where this is going to go. And like, sometimes it doesn't go well and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's almost just like the second time it happens, I'm usually like, okay, I remember where this went. Let's, let's adjust. Um, I, that's where like during this quarantine i feel like those super complicated multi-step um guards and or i would say like moves maybe even systems where they're just super complicated i feel like those are going to be tough to deal with you know those are going to be tough to try and uh practice uh because i feel like there's with something like a lapel guard there's a lot of variations that people are going to do a lot of very different things. You have to try them on a lot of different body types versus something like a back control system, you know, like the straight jacket system or something like that. It's something that you could practice on your one training partner over and over and over again. And I think it's going to translate really, really well. Yeah, that, that is a, uh, definitely an issue when you have one training partner is what's the body type. You know, what, what are they good at? What are they not good at? And then you have to work with that. And you definitely want to uh, use that to your advantage if you can, you know. It, but if you're 100 pounds bigger than your tra training partner for the day, you know, working back control is, is probably one of the better things you could do. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite training things is three people and doing like a round robin of three minutes a piece so you get a six minute round you get a three minute break a lot of it's not very often anymore but back in the day you know you're used to having class sizes be 15 20 25 whatever and then occasionally three people show up you know total including the instructor and, and the other two guys are like man only three i'm like this is gonna be crazy good guys here we go you're gonna love this and it's always fun to do a three-person training uh, session yeah, I think three minutes is, is perfect, enough time to recover. And you can also have three minutes of study time and watch what the other two guys are doing. And and then you get back in and that dude's three minutes in, so you got a chance to give him hell for a few minutes <laughs> <laughs> before you're in the same shoes. But, yeah, that's one of my favorite training methodologies. You can go in for 40 minutes, an hour, or whatever, and get a lot of work in in a short period of time and be done. It is really nice to be able to – you know, these three minutes we're going to do back control. This three minutes is guard pass. This three minutes, and you can just break it up that way. That way, you have some specific sparring, or maybe the whole time is is just a couple of different things. But uh, be able to, it's not just crazy rolls the whole time. You get to have a little bit of a smarter training if you need it. Yeah, people are way more into. Um, they're more open to positional sparring now when there's just like one or two training partners, because it's almost like they'll, they'll take what they can get. Um, if, if there's a room full of 20 people, which I would say like our biggest classes that we have at our gym, maybe like 25 people. But if you said to them like, Hey, I would like to drill this specific move for the next five minutes, instead of doing like a live round, they kind of look at you like, okay i'll do it but you know i have all these other options i could go train with somebody else and get five minutes of sparring and and where now it's like hey let's let's break down the the subtleties of this entry you know of this suite and now they're like yeah okay let's do that it's like because there's because desperation <laughs> makes uh makes this all look extremely attractive uh you know that's it's been a good thing for my drilling, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, but I, I don't. I think once the students see how their progress is changed with that uh, specific sparring, it's a pretty easy sell long term. But it's not. It is not as fun to just have a good roll. You know, if I'm going to work 
you know, butterfly guard passes for five minutes straight. That that might be a little bit boring, but you do learn a ton. And I don't, I can't count the amount of times that I've been wanting to work on a side control arm bar and spent five minutes trying to get the side control or five minutes fighting off my back. Like that's even worse. I never got the train to move I wanted to work on. You know, they, they've talked a lot about um, society being different after this. And one of the things they've talked about is people working from home. In fact, I had a work meeting this morning uh, and everybody was joking about, uh, boy, when this is over, do we really need to go back to going to the office for 40 hours a week? You know, I mean, we've, we've been getting the work done and the office is basically empty. And uh, man, I can't wait till we're back to a room full of people choking each other. But I do think there'll be some people who realize there are other ways to get good at jujitsu besides just going five days a week and getting beat up every night. There's a lot of value to the uh, match study and to the tutorials. And there's, you know, I'll be honest, uh, at one gym I train at, sometimes I'll drive by and there'll be like two cars there. And I, I know class has already started. I'll be like, ah, I don't know if I want to deal with just two or three people and I, and I'll skip class. And I think at my mind and everybody else's mind is going to start to change a little bit about the value of those kind of things. Yeah, this is going to, it's hard to predict what's going to change in the world as far as work stuff. I mean, uh, that's not a category I've, <laughs> thought about but yeah we're definitely using different tools and for somebody like like me and a lot of students we mostly learn at class mm -hmm. and we're, we're being put in a situation where if I want to learn I learn online or BJJ fanatics or something like that those are great ways to learn jujitsu if you know how. I mean you can't just sit there and watch a three-hour video on takedowns and come away with really anything but if you can get a partner and you, you want to watch, a, you know, 40 minutes of somebody teaching some part of a system and, and, and work with your partner on that, that is a great way to learn jujitsu. And it's easier on our body. If, if I could just get my wife to, uh, to drill, I would be a happy man. But that is, that is a battle that I thought during this quarantine I might be able to win, but I have made absolutely zero progress and trying to get her to be a efficient training partner and she wants nothing to do with it. Why, why do you think that is? I think, she, I, I think she points out to me sometimes, uh, she said it like this weekend and, I was, and it didn't even register, make sense to me. She said, you have to realize pe some people don't want to strangle people. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> i was like i don't i don't know what you're talking about like i was like it, was, what do you mean like and i think about like uh i watch somebody do a, a choke or i watch somebody do something uh, uh some sort of move and i'm like that's amazing i want to learn how to do that and to her she just sees it and she's just like i don't see the i don't see the point i, I, don't, I don't i don't get it and i'm just like okay well it's hard to break through that it's hard to start there like why would you want to strangle somebody well because it's awesome um <laughs> and it's it's you, you know you get to do it too you know like if somebody gets to do it to you that's the deal you know like yeah i work this move it's very difficult it stinks it's it's not fun getting strangled don't get me wrong like i i say this all the time and i'm like i i don't like tapping right like i don't like tapping Nope. And when people are like, oh, I'll tap to anybody, I'll tap, no problem. But like, nobody likes it. Like, I don't like tapping, but you do it because you have to do it. You do it because it's, it's part of the deal, you know? And the cool thing about tapping and this whole thing is like, we get to start over again. We get to, you get to do it to me. You get to try it on me. Like, that's the, the, the deal. Uh, and I don't think she gets that yet. Uh, she loves the self-defense aspect of it because uh, she wants to be able to like protect herself. But then I'm, I, I think she doesn't want to do the actual like the, the grind to get to that level to where you can feel confident because it takes a long, long time. Even if you just train once a week for a year, it's like, are you going to be able to protect yourself? Maybe. <laughs> it depends who's attacking you, really. <laughs> right, right. 
And, so, and I always say like one of the biggest fears is like, you're going to run into somebody that knows what they're doing. Like that's terrifying to me. Right. Like that's, that has always been a, ever since I've started training, I'm like, Oh crap, I could run into somebody that's actually trained. And then I don't know what I would do. Yeah. I, I have an opinion on that. You know, th there used to be this saying that any decent blue belt is going to be able to just mop the floor up with an untrained individual. So therefore you can feel confident in your ability to defend yourself because there's not a ton of people out there training jujitsu. But the reality is, I worry that anybody that's going to pick a fight with me, for anybody that's out looking for trouble, they probably have a little bit of wrestling experience. They watch the UFC. They've been to some jujitsu classes. They've probably been getting in two or three fights a year for 10 years. That's some type of training. The, the odds of me running into somebody that has no idea what the closed guard is, is almost zero. You know, 15 years ago, it was. You, you surprised people. They didn't have any idea what jujitsu was. But anybody that's going to pick a fight now, they at least have an idea what's going on. Joe, so uh, the main problem with your premise is that they're picking the fight with you. If you go on the offensive and find the person, if they would know. There, there you go. If I go cherry pick my opponent, I that's, what, that's what they're doing to you. They look at you and they say, hey, I can take this guy. No, yeah, but with, this old dude. <laughs> with, with, with your wife, it, I mean, that, that's a tricky situation to get somebody to, to train and, and really to get her to train any form of jujitsu is, is even more of a stretch, but I think you're, you're doing good with the idea of let's do a little bit of self-defense stuff and, and then sneak in a little bit of jujitsu and that, you know, and, and is with, with my wife, she's been training for several years now, but once she had a couple of moves that she was more comfortable with, she kind of uh, was able to find some more enjoyment. And, and when we, when we train or when we roll, one of my bigger priorities is that she's having a good time. She doesn't need to win every time, but she does need to feel like she's doing jujitsu and, and she's establishing some part of her game. And sometimes I get out, sometimes I don't, but like, like if she's having bad experiences on the mats, I don't expect anybody to keep coming back from that. And, you know, if, if you can make the self-defense lessons something that she really likes, which I don't know how to do that, <laughs> but, uh, and then, you kind of if she starts asking questions you're doing great you know if she starts getting more interested in this well how do we get off the ground then like getting off the ground is a great skill that like a lot of people don't even realize is a, is a big deal how to get back up because if somebody knocks you down and they got two buddies or whatever like you can't stay there and work your guard game you got to get out of the building <laughs> but i don't know it's just that's interesting i think a lot of people are in the same boat drew they, they would like uh their spouse to train some of it just depends on on the person my wife is a real competitive person and it's just uh she needs to to get some of that like feel like she's doing better every every time or a little bit and and feel like uh she's developing her game which she definitely is she's she's been adding things to her her game all the time but um you know when i first started juice to I just sucked for a long time. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to like, it was just, it was rough, but that's, I don't know. It's a different approach. I, I do admire you for trying and for, for, for bringing it up. And I don't know, it, it, but then again, it's, it's, everyone could do it, but it's definitely not for everyone. Some people just, it's not, it's uncomfortable all the time. Like it's a pretty miserable sport. Like, <laughs> you have to deal with that. <laughs> and, if you, and if comfort's your big thing, uh, there's other sports or other activities you could do that you could remain a little more comfortable, I'd imagine. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because, like, uh, I'm training with this this guy one-on-one uh, -on -one lately, and he's, he's a brown belt, and he is way better than me, and he has uh, got some size on me, and it's pretty tough and difficult. And uh, it's not – I don't – I don't ever find myself in good positions. It's pretty miserable, like all the way through. <laughs> but at the end of those rounds, I'm almost like, hey, I, I survived. I'm not dead. You know, I, I may have tapped a couple of times, but I didn't die. And uh, I came back home one time and she was like, oh, how was, how was training? And I was like, oh, it was, it was great. It's like, I got destroyed. And, she, and like those two things like didn't, don't compute <laughs> to her. It's like, I got destroyed. 
and it was great. And she was like, oh, I thought you, I thought you would have done well. I'm like, you thought I would have done well against that guy? Like, no, not even close. Um, and she's like, but you still had fun? And I'm like, I had a blast. And those things, it's like, I don't know if she understands how, like, you have to learn to love getting beat. You know, you have to learn to, to, to see a training partner and be like, that guy's going to beat me soundly. And I'm going to go for that guy. I'm going to pick that guy for my role because I know he's going to beat me. And if you don't have that mindset, and I think she said something like, if I'm not immediately good at something, I don't like it. And, you know, it's like a video game. If you pick up a video game and you're immediately good at it and you're winning all the time, it's not very fun. You know, but if you're playing a difficult game that requires uh, kind of a ramp up for you to get better, like the payoff is so much more so i feel like if she ever experienced like actually getting a tap you know like actually submitting somebody after six months of trying to get there she would be like hooked and i think that's the biggest thing for everybody is how to get them to that point to where they hit that like moment where like oh i just got it i just i just got it and then that once that dopamine hits and you feel good about six months of like grind just so that you could hit an arm triangle on somebody, you know, and then you, you, they tap and you're like, was that, was that for real? And they're like, yeah, man, you got me. It's like that feeling is, I don't know if it can, it's almost like we're chasing the dragon. We're trying to chase that feeling all the time. Um, and uh, I don't know if it, it'll ever be as high as that first time whenever you actually get it. So if I could just get her there, maybe then I'll start. But four years in, she's she's four years behind me now. I think she would be frustrated being, you know, the idea of starting out as a white belt, I don't think she likes that, right? Like, yeah. again, nobody wants to be a white belt. And guess what? You're going to be a white belt. Like, you're going to be bad at everything at first. That's part of it. It's, and you're going to be bad for a while. That's also part of it. Yeah. No, nobody expects you to be good at the beginning. Even if you come in there athletic, you come in there from some other sport, it, nobody has expectations you're going to do anything great at just do it for a while, and except for yourself. Like, you think, I'm going to do great when I get in. That's all happened. Hey, guys, we've got about a minute and a half left. It's going to turn, turn this thing off. Uh, Drew, when this whole thing is over um, and, and people want to come train with you, maybe they're kind of near you, is there a good way to, to train with you or, or – find you yeah so uh i i train at tiktok brazilian jiu-jitsu in charleston south carolina we are open to anybody coming in if we don't care what school you're from we we're very relaxed and uh like a, a very friendly gym so uh it's tiktok uh jiu-jitsu uh in charleston south carolina um yeah awesome guys this has been fun i'm, I'm glad you have on here drew uh, good to meet you, my friend. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all you do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely man. All right. We'll uh, catch you guys next time. All right. Drew, it's good to meet you. Byron, we'll see you, man.